situation, you want to have a lawyer prepare the paperwork and make sure it's going through the process correctly. Uh, definitely, you need an attorney in a contested situation. Depending on what's being contested, um, there are many different defenses that can be brought to the termination of the parental rights or reasons that it should be prosecuted. I think with, uh, well, I think I know, what, if a parent is having his or her parental rights involuntary, involuntarily terminated, they have an automatic right to counsel. Mm -hmm. So they That's have right. a right to counsel. Court appointed? Yep. In Massachusetts, right. you can get a court appointed. It's called Care and Protection petition um, or TPR, some states mm -hmm. call them termination Termin of parental, parental rights. rights, and you have an automatic right to an attorney, court appointed in mass. Now, what happens, we're sort of moving <coughs> from the adoption a little mm -hmm. bit to the DCYF calendar in Rhode Island. Department of Children, Youth, and Families has a calendar where um, the courts will um, take situations where DCYF comes into a home and says that for whatever reason, it could be because they just don't have the ability or there's abuse or neglect, that children need protection of the state from their parents. Mm -hmm. And yes. so this DCYF calendar um, is actually designed to provide services to the family so that the children who are in need of some state help and protection uh, can be reunited with the family. The ultimate goal isn't going in termination it's, it's to let, reunite let's have a plan of reunification yeah. um, and so what happens if with these cases if you're going down the track and it's just not happening and there's some abuse or serious abuse or problems that's when DCYF to give the children some stability um, would move to terminate the parental rights of TPR as mm -hmm. Jackie has said is there an interim step with the uh, CASA that well, tell, or explain what they have. Part of the whole process is um, the children have um, a court-appointed special advocate advocating yes. for them, which is a CASA worker. Um, the parents, as Jackie was saying, are entitled to counsel, and the court will appoint counsel for them. Just as in a criminal case, you're entitled to um, counsel in DCYF calendar you are. And when you get to the point of termination, the standard is actually even beyond the best interest of the child because it's... A parental right is a very fundamental right, um, and the court will not terminate that right without significant evidence. Uh, so since it's such an important fundamental right, you as a person who's involved in this calendar, a parent, are entitled to representation. And you do, in representing uh, a mother or father, you'd be likely to help uh, document things that are supporting whatever their position is, presumably. And how long would that process take if someone is trying to defend that they are, in fact, a fit parent? Oh, geez, in a, a normal trial calendar, you would have a period for discovery, which is exchanging information yes. between both sides, uh, medical reports, psychiatrist reports, whatever it is, police reports. Um, then you would have a pretrial. Uh, maybe have one or two pre-trials, case management conference, put it on a trial calendar. Depends time? on the court, maybe eight, nine months, maybe yeah, a really? year, year or a half. It can stretch out for a significant period of time. Mm -hmm. But what the state is supposed to be doing during that period of time through DCYF is working on this reunification plan and giving services. Depends on what the issue that the parent or the child or both are having. Sometimes, as I said, it's not because the parent's abusive um, or neglectful but they're just dependent upon the state for help because they can't provide the services they need to care for their child. So the state will step in and provide services, counseling or um, other types of services. And the whole idea is while this trial process is wending its way, perhaps the state is also working towards the reunification. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Now, um, perhaps this is a good time to springboard to things about juvenile law such as maybe the parents aren't working together so well and their child ends up having drug, alcohol, some sort of criminal offense. Uh, there what are a couple of ways that um, juvenile cases can be heard in juvenile court. They do have a juvenile court in Massachusetts. Rhode Island they have a juvenile calendar. Um, you can have a child that is wayward or delinquent. delinquent. There's a difference between the two. A and delinquent is. child is a child who's committed uh, an offense, a right. criminal offense. It would almost amount to a felony. Yeah. A felony. And then you okay. have a wayward child who is in need of services, acting up, maybe having problems at school. Or and the criminal offense would be more like a misdemeanor. Yes, yeah. And there are a couple ways of getting the child into the system. Certainly if the child commits a crime, they're in the system. Okay. If a parent has problems with a child that is uh, delinquent, wayward, whatever it is, they don't go to school, they're truant, they ha they're never home, 
a, a parent in Massachusetts can petition the court for assistance. And that's called a CHINS petition, C-H-I-N-S. It's a child in need of services. And what happens is the, the state does step in and they do attempt to assist the family and assist the child with getting back on the right path. Rhode Island has a similar um, petition that a parent could file through mm -hmm. the police department or the court. Um, for no fault of our own, we can't control this child and we need some help. And again, now, the juvenile court in Rhode Island is got a um, calendar. calendar. It is really designed to deal with these criminal type of actions as well as that. Um, and the ultimate goal is actually rehabilitation, not punishment. It's the same thing in, in, in um, Massachusetts. Massachusetts as well. Yeah, you want to rehabilitate the child. That, that's probably the reason why this, their, their case is sealed if, if it is a right. criminal case, unless yeah. it gets transferred to a state court. Uh, right. The, the juvenile calendar child is, an adult. is a closed court. Yes. Only the juvenile and those attorneys or workers who are involved with the case are allowed in at a time. And so it's um, sort of done with a big hallway full of people getting called in one at a time. The issue again is it's a volume type of situation and the judges really need some time I think to get in and really work with those children and find out what's going on in their lives and why they are like that. As Jackie was just alluding to, someone who's been in that system and has been in it more than a few times could get waived out of the family court to superior court if um, on a, a couple of different issues. If it's a serious crime, they can get waived out, or if they've had multiple contacts and the rehabilitation's not working, they could get waived out, depending on the age and the type of crime. Interesting situation, because this is legal matters, and we do issues that are of interest um, to the community and uh, in news, most recently. Craig Price was just recently in the news again, yes. coming up for potential parole. When Craig Price committed his crimes, he was young, I think, 15, 14, 13? First one was 13, and then he, he was arrested when he was 15 for the right. second murder. Right, and at the time that that happened, the law in Rhode Island was, he couldn't be waived out because you had to be, I think, 17 at the time, no matter what type of crime So he had he to be prosecuted as a, as a minor. He was prosecuted as a minor, so theoretically, family court has jurisdiction over those cases until the child reaches the age of 21. So Craig Price, could have been held on that crime only until the age of 21. He committed some other offenses, so he's been held much longer. Um, what happened is following the Craig Price case, the legislature changed the rules on waiver. So if you commit a serious crime, no matter how old you are, the court can consider a waiver of the petition. So that was an interesting change in the jurisdiction of uh, juvenile court and the waiver process. Well, speaking of Craig, uh, there was an issue about the drugs that he had been using and I imagine that if you have a juvenile who's dealing with alcohol or drugs and has then caused some, has been caught with some crime, are they likely to rehab a child with anything short of committing murder? Oh, well, well, you mean to waive thing. or to rehab? Are they likely to say we will rehab, this is a, a child, let's see if we can help him before he ends up committing a serious crime? Well, that's always the goal is to rehabilitate the, the child, which is the whole right. purpose, I think, of the juvenile court. That's right. To, to re, the, because there's always the hope and the opportunity for rehabilitation. Sometimes what they'll do is they'll put him in, uh, I want to say it's a diversion program, not a... Uh, well, there's a couple of different things. We have the drug a, court. Yeah, you can put him into a drug court, um, which is that you have a, a judge that travels around throughout the state and... Is that what they do? That, that's, that's drug right. court and yep. truancy court. The, which is the, that's the one that actually goes from, from outside of the courthouse to yeah. different areas. Um, and that truancy court is dealing, of course, with school, school, schools and kids issues. who aren't attending. Mm -hmm. They can uh, place them in a, in a home that deals with delinquent or, or wayward children. For mm -hmm. instance, you have Ocean Tides in Narragansett, which specifically, um, which specifically have children, minor children, and it's, they rehabilitate them, they educate them, and their purpose is to avoid that child from having to go into the training school. So if that works out, right. then you avoid this. So there's always the opportunity